Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be going over the basics of the Divi Portfolio Module. So before we dive into the tutorial here, I just wanted to say that if you wanted to get Divi and you don't have it already, you can use my special affiliate discount link in the description below. It's going to get you at least 10 to 20% off of Divi. And that's wpwithtom.com slash Divi if you want to check that out for yourself. And I just also wanted to mention that I'm going to be posting videos regularly here covering all of the Divi modules. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to check those out. And with this out of the way, let's dive into the Divi Portfolio Module. So the Portfolio Module is a great way to just display your work that you've done on your website. So to get started, let's go down here and we're going to add a new row. And it's just going to be a regular section here and one row and then here we can search for portfolio so if you go here you can see that it actually says filterable portfolio and portfolio I've covered this one in a video before and depending on what you want you actually might want to go with this filterable portfolio and basically the big difference there is it's gonna have tags displayed on the screen so we'll say like SEO or design or something like that and they can click on that and it will filter and only show the ones for design if they click design or only show the ones for SEO if they click on SEO. So I just wanted to be upfront about that right now, but we're going to be covering this one here. And this one I think is a little bit more basic. So if we just go and click on that, we can get started. And by default, it pulls in different posts that we have. And if we go back over to the dashboard, we can see it's under projects. So if you add new projects in here, this is where it's going to pull. And I'm going to just go back here and this one says YouTube right here. And this is the YouTube one right here. If you went and you actually click on edit for this project, you're going to see that there's different categories. So on the right side, there's categories right here in this project. And this one is under logo. So that's how it pulls in different categories. So if I went back over here, you can see it says logo design SEO. And same thing over here logo design SEO so those are where the categories are pulling in for each of these projects here within your actual dashboard I just want to be upfront with that because that really does matter it's not going to pull anything if you don't have them back here within the project section so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go and make this design and change the layout I'm going to just make this a grid layout here so you can see that this is what our grid layout looks like if I go and I just save this I'm going to scroll up and see we have this other color right here so I'm going to go and I'm actually going to pull that color so let's go to where it says content background and I'm going to grab this color right here this code for this color I'm going to copy it so it stays consistent with the rest of the site so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add this to the background for the entire section so I'll click add background color and I'll just paste it in right here and now it changes the whole background so I'm going to go and click checkbox to save it and now we can go back in here and start editing how this looks overall it actually looks pretty decent from the start I think but let's go into some of the nitty-gritty here so we have the content post count that says 10 you can see it's displaying all 10 right here if you wanted to make it even you only want it to display 8 for example you can just type 8 in there and then it says if you want to see older posts you can go see those as well now, if you only wanted to display certain categories, so you see under it says logo, logo, logo for all these, but some of them say SEO, design. So let's just say we want to display only the design one. So we'll go to 10 here, and then we'll see all of them, and we'll just click design. Now it's only going to show those three that are for design. And if we click SEO, it's going to show those three that are with SEO, or these four with SEO. So if we went to design and SEO, we're going to have a different number here. Now we have six display. So that is how you would filter those. I'm going to go all categories and let's just go eight. So it looks nice and even here in this case. So there we are with our eight displayed. So I'm going to just toggle this closed and now we can go down to elements and here you can choose if you want to show the title. So right here, the title is this YouTube, Twitter, SoundCloud. So I'm going to leave that on. So if you toggle it off, you can see what it looks like. I'll leave it on. But I am going to go and toggle off the categories. So now it's just showing the title and no categories under it. If you want pagination, so let's just say you had like 50 different projects on here, you might want eight on each page. So then you'd have eight on each one. It would be one page one, page two, page three. So that is where this comes into play. 
I'm just going to go and leave that on in this case. Now down here, this is for links. So I don't think you actually need this because if someone actually clicks on this, it will take them right to the page or your project right here. So it will take them to that project page once they hover over and click on this. So I don't think you really need to worry about the links here or the background or anything else. For now, I'm just gonna hop right over to design and we can get started here. So we already edited this grid layout here and made this a grid instead of the full width, just like this. So depending on what you want, you wanna make sure your images are more optimized on this or larger images. If you're gonna use full width, I'm gonna use grid. It's easier to keep them optimized and looking clean in my opinion, and it doesn't take up as much space. Now, if we were to go down here to overlay, we can click on this and it says zoom icon color. So that is blue right now by default. And it goes off of your theme colors that you have in your design presets. So if we go here and we click on this and it's going to be orange, it's going to be more like our site color. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on this and I'm going to go in here and use the color picker and choose something a little more dark orange, I guess, something like, like this, I guess would be fine. And now you can hover over and you see that. Now it turns almost fully white. You barely can even see the Twitter icon behind it. You barely can see the YouTube button right there behind it. So if we wanted to, we can actually go right in here, overlay, and it says hover overlay color. So we can click on this and change that. So let's just say we want it to be like, uh, maybe like a gray, but kind of transparent. So let's just go and click right here. And you can see when you hover over it, you can still see what's behind it. I kind of like that look. Maybe I changed the orange a little bit to be a little bit brighter, but I like how it looks overall when you hover over it. You can see a clear difference. You know you're hovered over the image, but it also has this nice looking button here as well. And if you want to change what the icon is, so right now we have it as this plus. If you wanted to add something else, you could. So you can have it like a magnifying glass right here. And if we click on it, you can see if we hover over it, now it has this magnifying glass with a plus. So that's just an option as well if you want to change the icon overall. So from here, I'm going to go up and I'm actually going to close overlay. And I'm going to go down to where it says image. And here we can actually add some rounded corners to our image. So let's just say we wanted to do 50 pixels on each corner. You can see it gets more rounded or you could do something like 20. And it's just going to have a slight rounded corner to it. It's up to you on what you want to do there. I always show this, but if you wanted to, let's just say we're going to go zero and now it's going to be square and then we can unlink them. So they're not all going to be the same. They're not all going to be rounded. You could do something like 80 pixels up here and it's going to be really rounded in the upper corner, but the other ones aren't. And then you could do 80 pixels down here as well. So now you have this cool shape or a different shape going on. I'm going to just go and I'm going to make them 20 and I'm going to link all of them. So I'm going to make them 20 all the way around. So it has this nice little round edges to them. If you want, you can also add a border and adjust the border width here and add that around. You can change the border color as well. It can look pretty good when you do that, I think. Maybe I'll just leave it like this with this two pixels one. Or you can go down here and you can also add a box shadow as well. So maybe if I add the box shadow, I won't have the borders. But you can see this little shadow around. And I like this one right here, this third one, personally. If you want to adjust how effective or how strong that shadow is, you can go right here and change the blur strength. So if you increase that, it's going to increase the shadows around. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it when I adjust it all the way or not. So you can revert it back to what it was. It's 18 pixels by default. And you can change the shadow color as well. So you can make it darker like this if you want. I'll just leave it as is in this case. And I'll go back up here and I will close this image, toggle that closed. So right here, text, you can go and we can center align the text. If you want to, you can make the color light here, but you can also edit the title in particular. So I'm just going to leave it as dark. And then I'm going to toggle this closed right here. And I'll go down to where it says title text. So title text is this text right underneath. And you can go and change this. I'll make it bold in this case. And I'll make it white right here. And if you want to, you can go and change the title text shadow. You can change the size if you want to make it bigger. So let's just say you want to make it, I don't know, 22 pixels. You want to add a text shadow to it. You can add that here, different text shadows to change the look or the effect that they have going on here. So it's really up to you what you want to do here. I'll just leave it like this for now. Maybe I'll make it a tiny bit smaller. And if you want to change the line height, you can do that right here. So title line height, if you do that, it's going to put it a little further below the image. So it's not right up on it. 
So if you want to, by default, it's 1.7. I'll just go and put it at 2. And then I'm going to, again, toggle this close. So that's just some basic edits that you can do there. Now for sizing, this is something I wanted to cover here. So right here it says width, max width, and things like that. So let's just go and adjust the width here. So if you wanted to make it smaller, you can do that. So let's just say you wanted to make it 80 right here. You can make it fit to a specific area and then center it right here. If you don't want it taking up 100% being larger, you can go and adjust the size of your project's area right here within your portfolio. So that's an option as well. I'm going to leave it as 100, but I would consider doing that if you want it to be a little bit smaller. And then the last thing I'm going to cover here in terms of basics goes with the animation. And you can use different animations to display these. So you can have it slide in, fade in, bounce, roll. You can do all kinds of things. Fold in, flip, zoom. And I like slide. Slide and zoom are very similar. I'm going to go with slide here. And you can change the animation duration if you want it to take longer or shorter to slide in. I like to have a little effect, but I think you only should use so sparingly throughout your website. I don't think you should have every single thing animate in on your website, which I see a lot of people do. So that really wraps up the basics of the Divi portfolio module here. You'll just want to go and save it and save it again to make all the changes go into effect. And I really hope you just enjoyed this quick video. And if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up on this video and subscribing for more WordPress and Divi related videos. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.